Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to another Pixel Pad tutorial. We are coding our Fruit Slashers game. And in the last video, I presented to you a challenge that I wanted you to accomplish, right? That is to add the watermelon to your game and the watermelon should increase our time left, right? So first I wanna solve that challenge with you. So let's start by adding the sprite for the watermelon. So here I have the sprite for the watermelon, select asset and I'll call it watermelon. And now that we have the watermelon sprite down here, we can add it to our fruit, right? As an option, a fruit option. So here I'm gonna add one more uh, possibility of number here. So instead of being zero to five, it's gonna be zero to six. And this is gonna give us a number from zero to five actually, right? So if the number is four, it is a bomb. And L if, if it's not four, three, two, one, or zero, then check if self dot number is equals equals five. If it is equals equals five, first I want to set the sprite to be the watermelon sprite, watermelon dot PNG, PNG, right? And this is not gonna give me any points and I cannot just skip this line because here on the slicer, we always increase our score with the fruit points, right? So if our fruit doesn't have a points variable, then this is gonna bug our game. It's gonna break our game. So here in the fruit, you can see that we always create the, the points variable inside each of these ifs, right? So if it is banana, my points variable is one. If it is eggplant, my points variable is three, right? So for the, for the watermelon, we also need a points variable, but as we are not gonna give any points or take any points from us with uh, the watermelon, I can just say that these points is gonna be zero. It won't give me or take any point from me, right? And the last thing is a tag. So self.tag is gonna be watermelon. So we can know that this is a watermelon, right? So now I'm gonna go to the slicer and here on the slicer loop, actually, if we play the game, let's see if we just can see the watermelon. So I'm gonna wait, oh, there you go, the watermelon there. But as you can see, let me try to get another watermelon here because the watermelon doesn't have a, a splash animation, right? So whenever we slice it, it doesn't give, it doesn't have an animation, right? And it also doesn't give us any points, which is good. That's what we want. So first I'm gonna give the green splash animation to my, uh, to my watermelon. So what I could do is I could add here for the pineapple because the pineapple use the green splash, right? And here, like we did with the banana and orange, I added an or. So it can be either a banana or an orange to create an orange splash, right? So I could do the same here. If the tag is pineapple or watermelon, I give the, the animation, but I will not do that. I will create a another L if, because I want to do something else. I want to do something else. I don't want to just uh, give the green splash to my watermelon, but I also want to increase my timer if it is on watermelon, right? So I'll create another L if here to check if the fruit dot tag is equals equals watermelon, because if it is watermelon, so first I'll create my green splash and position this green splash as the same position as my fruit. So here I'll say that my splash is green splash and this is splash dot x is gonna be the same as my fruit dot x and this splash dot y is gonna be the same as my fruit dot y. Uh, y. Okay, that's the first step. Let's see if that's working so far. So let me wait for a watermelon here, but it should be giving me a green splash animation. There you go. So the animation is working. And the only thing left now is to increase our time left. So to increase our stage timer, all we have to do is say that if the fruit tag is watermelon, I create the green splash and I also increase my stage timer. So I can say that my game dot stage timer is gonna be my game dot stage timer 
plus a number. So if I want to increase five seconds, as you know, I cannot just say five, right? So it has to be five times 60, and this is equal to 300. So if I slice a watermelon, I should get uh, five more seconds on my stage timer. Let's see if that's working. I press play. Let's wait, oh, watermelon, there you go. And now I have 62, that's fine, yeah, that's great. So as you can see, it is working perfectly fine. Right, let me get another watermelon here and pay attention at the time. Uh, watermelon, watermelon. No, no, there you go. Okay, so 50. Yeah, it was 46 and then went to 51 and then 50. Right, so it is working perfectly fine. So that's how we can solve these, this challenge. You just need an, another L if here, right? And we just have to increase our stage timer using 300 instead of five. So if you wanted 10 seconds, then you would do 600 here, right? So you can choose the amount of time you want to increase. And okay, now that we have the, the stage timer working, I mean the watermelon working, I want us to keep working now on the game over room. So whenever our time is over, we go to the game over room. Wow, right on time, very good. We go to the game over room, but the game over room is still black. It's not saying anything, we cannot play the game again if we go there, right? So the first thing I want to do, I will go to my game over room and here I'm gonna create a text. And why am I going to create a text? Because I wanna say here right in the middle, uh, game over. And to display game over, that's a text, right? So I'm going to create a text here. So here on my game over screen, on the start tab, I'm gonna say that uh, game over text is a new text, a uh, new underscore text that will uh, have the following text on it, game over, and it will be positioned on the position zero, zero. So zero X and zero Y. So for us to see if it is working or not, we have to press play and then wait one minute, right? But I don't want to keep doing that. As we are changing the game over room now, we have to constantly keep looking at the game over room to see how it looks like, right? So I'm gonna go here on the game class and I'm gonna change this for now to not start on the play room, but to start on the game over room. So whenever I press play now, my game will start on the game over room. So whenever I press play, you can see that I'm on the black screen, that is the game over room. And this should have something written on it, right? Game over. but we cannot see anything, but that's because it is writing something for us, but the text is black, right? So if I change here, for example, my game over text dot color to be, I'm going to use red here. So if I change the text to be red, now we can see the game over there, right? And I'm going to make this text bigger. So I can say that the game over text dot font size is, uh, I'm gonna try 150. I want it to be very big. Okay, maybe a little bit more, 170. All right, and now I just wanna drag this game over text to the middle of my screen, right here, right? So I have to change those values for the position. So instead of zero for X, for example, I have to bring it to the left a little bit. So I'll try minus 300. Let's see how that looks like. So I stop and play my game. Okay, now it's better, but I still have to drag more. So here we have to keep trying all those values to position the text at the position we want. So here I'm gonna keep trying the values and I'll be back once I find the values that I want. Okay, so I found a good position for my game over text. And now actually what I want to do, I want to display my score right here. So first, I don't want to just display the number for my score. I actually want to write here, your score was, and then under that, I show the number. So first, I'll need one text to be my score info text. So the information of my score 
uh, this is gonna be uh, not dot score info text is a new underscore text and that's gonna say uh, your score score was and now I have to find the positions for that again for now I'll just say zero zero and I'll give it a white color so I can see it score info text uh, dot color is I'm gonna give it white color so now when I press play I can find it there I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger as well so score uh, info text dot font size it's gonna be let's say 60 okay smaller a little bit 40 all right now I will drag this around a bit so minus 60 maybe okay I think that's more centralized so that's good for me so those are the positions I used for the score info text and for the game over text right and now I just want to display now my score here so I want to display the number that is representing my score right here under this text so that's gonna be another text and I'll call it now the score text so the score text is gonna be a new underscore text and this text is gonna display not a text like this like 0 or 50 actually I don't want to choose the number for my score right I want it to display my game score so I can just say game dot score so display my game score on the positions 0 0 for now I'm gonna change later and I'm also gonna change now the color for this text and the color is gonna be yellow and I also gonna change the font size so score text dot font size and this is gonna be 60 let's try so I stop and play uh, game object has no attribute score and go over start oh that's because we are starting our game uh, straight on the game over room so it needs to go to the playroom to create my game score right so what I'm gonna do for now I'm gonna create my game score here game.score equals uh, let's say 60 just so we can see more or less how uh, where it would be right and how it would look like so I'm have I have to move my score around so I'm gonna give here another position for the Y first all right I think that's in a good position now as you can see my game score is in this position here minus 50 minus 50 and it has a font size of 100 right and that's how it looks like but now we are using the variable game score that we created here in the game over, right? We have to use the one in the playroom, but as we are starting straight on the game over room, we don't pass through the playroom, so it doesn't create our variable for us. So if we take off this line again, uh, this is gonna give me an error because it says that it doesn't know what, uh, what score is. So I have to have that variable there, let me put it back. Right, but at the end we don't we should not have this variable here. So you have to remember to remove this variable from here uh, once we've we're done with the game over screen. So one last thing that I want to do, I want to write down here that the player can press spacebar to play the game again. Right? So I'm gonna write a new text here, and this is gonna be the restart text. It's gonna be a new text that says press space to play again and I have to position this text and I also have to choose a color for this text so score uh, uh, not score restart text dot color I'm gonna say that this is white uh, quotes uh, white 
and I also say restart text dot font size is gonna be uh, 20. Stop play. I can see my text over there and 20 I think it's too small. Let's try 30. It's a bit bigger and I'm just gonna move it around. All right, so those are the positions I've used, minus 160 and minus 320, and the font size 30. That's for our restart text, right? And the last thing we have to do now is to be able to press space and actually play the game again, right? Because if I press space now, nothing happens. So that we have to do on the loop tab. So here on the loop tab, I'm gonna keep checking if the player has pressed any key. So if key, was pressed so that's how we can detect if any key was pressed right and then i need brackets and i want to say which key i'm looking for so if i'm looking for l or w or y or p or space right so if i have pressed the space key then what i want to do i want to restart the game and to restart the game is basically going back to the playroom right so if I press space, I want to room underscore set play, oh, play. So if I press the space bar, I should be able to go to the playroom. There you go. And then my game restarts, right? So now that we've finished the game over room, first thing we have to remove this game dot score equals 60 from here. We don't need that here anymore. Right, this is give a, giving us an error now because it doesn't know what score is, but that's fine because now we're gonna start the game not in the game over room but in the play room, and the play will create the score variable for us. Right, so let's see if the game is fully working. I'll play here for one minute and see if I can go to the to the game over room with my score being displayed there for us. There you go. So we go to the game over room. It says my score and I can press space to play again. And it works perfectly fine. All right, so now we can save our game. And before you going to the next video, I want you to practice something for me. So we've just created our game over room, right? But we will also need a main menu room. So the main menu room will be the room that we start our game. So the main menu should be something similar with the game over room. So in the main menu room, so this is your game screen, right? And your main menu room will just show the name of your game here, right in the middle. And down here, you will say something like press space to play the game or click on the screen to play the game, something like that, right? And then you have to check for the click or the key press. And then if the, the player click or press a key, it goes to the playroom. And once it is the, on the playroom, it will play the game for one minute. Later, it will go to the game over room. And then if you press space on the game over room, it should go back to the playroom, right? Not to the main menu room. So the main menu room is the room that you should start your game. So here on the game, uh, on the start tab, you should start your game not on the playroom, but on the main menu room. And from the main menu room, you go to the playroom. And that's it. That's all you have to do for uh, for the next video. Try doing that by yourself before watching next video. And in the next video, I'll do that with you. All right, so I'll see you. Bye.